Hey everyone, and welcome back to another one. Welcome to Program Code 101, the place where we learn the art and skills required to develop code. I'm your instructor, Mr. Decoder. In our previous video, we learned about the concepts of repetition constructs, with emphasis placed on the for, while, and repeat until loops. In that video, we saw the layouts of each type of loop statement, and also worked a few examples. If you missed the details of that video, please select the link above to review. In today's video, we will be looking at the concepts of counting and totaling using repetition constructs. We will also be generating pseudocode that demonstrates the use of selection and iteration statements to determine maximum and or minimum values. Counting involves increasing the value of a variable by a fixed amount repeatedly. The counter variable must be given an initial value before the counting instruction is carried out. This is done to facilitate the calculation. The initial value for the counter variable is usually set to the number zero. Example of counting using the while loop. The following problem statement requires a pseudocode to read a series of numbers and count how many numbers have been entered. Entry should be terminated when the user enters the value. 1. The algorithm should then display the total number of values entered. The solution shows a counter variable, count, being initialized to 0. Here, 0 acts as a starting value for count. A prompt and input statement is then used to accept the first value. In the prompt statement, there is an indication used to give the user an idea of what is needed to end input within the solution. This method is a good programming technique and increases the user friendliness of a program. The while loop header contains the while keyword and the condition num not equal to one. This condition acts as the point used to determine whether the loop continues. The compound statement within the while loop then outlines the actions to be repeated. The counting technique is then applied and the value store and count gets increased by one. Each time a loop is executed, a prompt and input statement is required to accept a new value. Without these inner prompt and input statements to accept a new value, the loop will be endless as the value stored in count will always be what was entered from the previous or outer prompt statement. This new value is then evaluated to determine whether the loop is terminated. Once the value minus one is entered, the keyword end while is used to indicate the termination point of the loop statement. The solution then ends through the display of the total number of values entered. Totaling is the process of generating a cumulative total by adding a value to its current total in order to obtain a new total value. The cumulative total is stored in a variable. This variable is assigned a starting value of zero, and as each value is added, a new cumulative total result is generated. You may be asking, what is the difference between the counting and totaling techniques? Using real-world examples, counting is simply increasing in value by a fixed amount. An example of this would be counting your steps when walking or exercising. With each step, your number of steps taken is consistently being increased by one. Totaling is also increasing in value. However, each amount is varied or not the same. An example of this would be totaling the amount of money you have in your pocket. When doing this, the value of each note is added to the previous total repeatedly. This is done until all notes have been added together and you know the overall value at the end. Example of totaling using for loop. The following problem statement requires a pseudocode to read the name and exam score for a class of 25 students. The algorithm should then calculate and display the average test score for the class. The solution shows the for loop header, which contains the for keyword, the counter variable, and the total number of times the loop will be executed. The compound statement within the for loop then outlines the actions to be repeated for all 25 students. Each time the loop is executed, a student's name and exam score are accepted. The totaling technique is then used for the accumulation of test scores from each student's score. Once the total number of iterations is achieved and all student details totaled, the keyword end for is used to show the termination of the loop. The average score is then calculated using the cumulative total from the loop and the last value, 25, stored in the variable count. The solution then ends through the display of the average test score for the group of students. 
Finding the maximum value. Finding the maximum value from a series of positive values need the use of a loop to be efficiently achieved. A variable, for example max, should be initialized to a value lower than the expected values being entered. This initial value is often set to zero. A comparison between the max variable and the input variable is then used to determine which is larger. If the input variable is larger than max, it is then assigned to the max variable. Example of identifying maximum value using loops. The following problem statement requires a pseudocode that accepts the name and test score for 10 students. It is then required to find and display the name and test score of the student who received the highest score. The solution starts by showing the initialization of two variables. These variables are used to store the name and score of the student with the highest test score. The for loop header contains the counter variable and the number of times the loop will be executed. The compound statement within the for loop outlines the prompt and input of a student's name and test score. A selection statement is then used to test whether test score is greater than the current highest score. If this condition is true, the variables containing the highest test score H score, as well as the student's name, H name, will be updated to store the current details of the student being entered. Each time the loop is executed, the current student's test score will be compared with the highest score to identify whether it's larger. If it is, the highest score and name will be updated again. Once the total number of iterations is achieved, the keyword end for is used to show the termination of the loop. The solution then ends by showing the name and test score of the student who achieved the highest score. Finding the minimum value. Finding the minimum value from a series of positive values can also be efficiently achieved through the use of a loop. A variable, for example mine, would need to be initialized using a value higher than the expected values being entered. This initial value is often set to 9999 or any higher value depending on expected entries. A comparison between the min variable and the input variable is then used to determine which is smaller. If the input variable is smaller than min, it is then assigned to the min variable. Example of identifying the minimum value using a loop. The following problem statement requires a pseudocode that accepts the age for a group of students, terminated by the value minus one. The algorithm is then required to find and display the lowest age of the students entered. The solution starts by showing the initialization of a variable. This variable is used to store the lowest age of student entered. The solution then shows a prompt and input statement being used to accept the age of the first student. The while loop header contains the while keyword and the condition age not equal to minus one. This condition acts as the point used to determine whether the loop is terminated. The compound statement within the while loop then outlines the actions to be repeated. A selection statement is then used to evaluate whether age is less than the variable containing the lowest age. If this condition is true, the variable containing the lowest age, L age, will be updated to store the current student age being entered. The inner prompt and input statement is then used to accept a new entry for student age. This new value is then evaluated to determine whether the loop continues or is terminated. Once the value, minus one, is entered the keyword end while is used to indicate the termination point of the loop statement. The solution then ends through the display of the lowest age entered. Concluding activity. There has been a lot of details provided and discussed in today's video. Please review all the concepts and examples discussed throughout the video and ensure that you have full understanding. Please place in the comments section any questions you may have in relation to anything discussed within this or any other video. In the next video, we will discuss the concept of arrays, including how and when it's used. We will also generate pseudocode using one-dimensional array. Thank you for being a part of another one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.